SpongeBob Conspiracy 6, the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. That is a crazy name. That's right. You read the title correctly. Did this I? This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory, and no, I am not joking. This seemingly I mean, it looked crazy. Is a I want, I'm not surprised. Very sinister. The beloved SpongeBob movie actually has a much darker and tragic meaning to it. I am being 100% serious when I tell you that I think this is my best, most convincing theory yet. And if you thought I don't my know, bro, I've been convinced on every single one of your theories. But Besides, like, the last one, besides the last one, I'm convinced on all of them, so I don't know how you're going to do outdo well, yourself. Get ready. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. Would y'all join the cult, the Goofy Goober cult? I would. I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. You're a Goofy Goober, yeah. We're all good. Like, bro, I'm already in it for real. What is happening? What am I seeing right now? That don't look like SpongeBob. Hey, uh, what's the biggest animal that you have? What? Oh boy, Alex has finally lost his mind. Goofy Goober alien death cult theory? What, did he make that in a random word generator? Trust me, there's actually a lot to this theory. And if anyone's qualified to make it, it's me, considering I, I made are. a whole web series about a restaurant being a front for a cult. Here at Pizza Time Pizza, we don't use any preservatives or fake ingredients. Pizza Time Pizza is not a cult. Pizza, 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 pizza. But those are the old days. I'm the SpongeBob guy now. Yep, Mr. SpongeBob. Demand. That's what we call you in the streets. Everyone is spam Mr. SpongeBob in chat. For more of these theories. I mean, the Mrs. Puff one has like 12 million views. That is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Now, this is the part of the video where I try to make you think I'm about to start the theory, but then, oh boy. <laughs> Act 1, The Cult of Goofy Goober. Goofy Goobers is an old-fashioned ice cream parlor that first appeared in the Spongebob movie. It's yep. the very definition of a fun, innocent place for children. So, Kinda like how on earth did I come to the conclusion that it's actually an alien death Or Five Nights at Freddy's. In fact, what even is an alien death cult? Usually, it's a religious group that wants you to believe that one day aliens will come to Earth and take the members of the cult to a better place. And okay. in order to get there, they have to commit mass suicide. The most infamous example of this being Heaven's Gate. Like I actually, said, actually, actually, be... okay. So if this is the case, it wouldn't be too crazy if they did believe in that because when you think of when you think of the earlier theories when he was talking about like people would come down in like drones as like recording everything, maybe they think those are the aliens that are going to come down and take them and fuck them. What? Yeah. A very dark video with some serious subject matter. So, how does this have anything to do with Goofy Goobers? In the more recent seasons of Spongebob, they've started referencing Goofy Goobers again. In fact, there's even an episode called The Goofy Newbie where Patrick gets a job there. And the it's hell? in this episode when Patrick is watching an employee training video that I first realized there was something more going on here. The story of our I knew they weren't crazy just founder, based on the movie. Reginald Goober, who for some unexplained reason was nicknamed Goofy. In 1842, he headed west in a covered ice cream wagon. Okay. He served his warm ice cream on rocks and sticks. From those humble okay. beginnings, Goofy Goober has grown into a multi-billion dollar business. You know, you have to be a part of a cult to be a billionaire. Yeah, that's, that's the fault. So the fact that they're a billion dollar company, that lets you know by, by itself that they're a uh, company yeah. video. They just want their employees to wash their hands and keep their work area clean. Only as that you, one, practice good hygiene. Yep. Two, maintain good work habits. Okay. Nothing out of the ordinary, except there's one more thing that they want you to do. And three, believe in extraterrestrials. <laughs> that's, a, that's a theory. It, it's over. They, that's a theory. Like, it's rap. Like, they just told us. They just told us. That's the that's the raps. Hugs and ice cream. Huh. An organization that wants you to believe in aliens. That couldn't be a... Heaven's Gate reference in Spongebob, could it? No. No, that, that's, that's no, crazy. not possible. And even if not it possible. was, it could just be a random throwaway gag. There's no way Goofy Goobers Heck. is actually It's a just cult, a joke. It's just a cartoon. Right? But yeah. then I started to rewatch every appearance of Goofy Goobers, and things took on a whole new meaning. 
One of the most basic ideas of a cult is that they strip you of your individuality and make you change yeah. your entire identity to be about the cult. And like that's exactly what Goofy Goobers does. Everyone there wears Goofy Goober uniforms just like a cult. I mean, what other restaurant has not just employees, but customers that always dress up in a specific way? And Bro. the theme song Bro. that is constantly repeated and reinforced is just the simple line, I'm, I'm a Goofy Goober. Goober. Yeah. Yeah. We're all goofy goobers, yeah. I'm a goofy goober. You're a goofy goober. We're all goofy goobers. What about the yeah? It's literally just a song saying that your whole identity is based around goofy goobers, and okay. that's it. And in the SpongeBob movie, there's a scene where SpongeBob and Patrick have to try their best to not sing along to the theme song, and it literally causes them intense pain to not sing along. Is that catchy though? It's just that catchy. It's, it's just as a catchy ass song. Brainwashed and physically can't stop themselves from singing it. And you can't even just chalk this up to SpongeBob and Patrick being weirdos. Two other fish can't stop themselves from singing along, even though it means they'll get beat up for it. Goofy, goofy, goober, goober, yeah! And just so like these are the good guys. They're trying to stop them from being brainwashed. They're, in your, they're looking for your best interest, but they dress them up like thugs so you can get the wrong impression. Mmm, SpongeBob got that deep ass right. Bolts have an icon or god that they worship. Goofy Goobers has the dancing peanut mascot that's all over the restaurant's branding. I mean, just look at how excited all the kids are when he comes out. Goofy Goober! <laughs> I mean, All right, but that's just the same because with kids like a mascot doesn't mean that they have some kind of religious worship for them. Exactly. Well, if you don't believe me, take it from SpongeBob himself. Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, okay. we worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake! We do not worship him. Patrick, you... <laughs> imagine, imagine just having nut on your, like, underwear. I don't have to imagine. You've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight. What do you call that? Worship? In the SpongeBob movie video game, there's even a Goofy Goober token that reads, In Goofy We Trust. Replacing no, that's the crazy. Word God that's, with insane. Goofy. that's insane. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. Things that's are insane. looking awfully culty, aren't they? Cults will also often create reading material about their beliefs for their followers to read, and okay. Goofy Goobers is no exception to this. In the new SpongeBob spin off, The Patrick Star Show, we see a Goofy Goober employee reading some kind of book about ice cream. And look at him. He's not busy working. He's choosing to read this in his downtime. I mean, compare him to Squidward, who sometimes reads in his downtime at work. It's not like he's reading about the crusty yeah, crab. Yeah, but it's a Patrick show. You know, it's not. It's not. Like it's a doctrine it's for not, cult's um, beliefs. A major part canon. of how cults get so it's successful is by getting their followers to give them money. Now, obviously, Goofy Goobers charges people for ice cream, but they actually convince their followers to trade their money for a made-up Goofy Goober currency. Uh, I don't know what Plankton's paying you, but if you let us go, I can make it worth your while. What is this? Uh, that, sir, is five goober dollars. That's Leave hilarious. Under at any participating goofy Does that mean Monopoly's a cult, too? Since, we, since we're paying money for fake cash, Monopoly's a cult? Mmm! Y'all better watch out for Monopoly. Explain how the goofy goober founder, an idiot who sold ice cream on rocks and sticks, turned the company into a multi-billion dollar franchise. He convinced people to believe that aliens would one day take them to a better place and got them to give them all their money. Another tactic that cults use to indoctrinate people is overloading them with compliments and making them feel oh, special. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. exactly what Goofy Goobers does to Patrick when he gets a job there. The training video They just says want you to feel good about yourself. Him. That's all it is. Well no they know no one lets they know no one like makes Patrick feel good about himself. So they're just trying to do that for him. The new Goofy Goober employee, we'd like you to know that we appreciate you. And then Aww, his manager thank says you, buddy. the exact same thing. I'm your manager and I want you to know that I appreciate you. And I appreciate you. Patrick Messing up and causing chaos, the manager says it once again. I'll give you another chance tomorrow. If it doesn't work out, I'm afraid you're fired. <clears throat> In a most appreciative way. There is no reason for the manager to be this appreciative of Patrick after all the terrible. He's just a good person, done. man. He's just, He's just a happy, good person. Him. The tactic is especially effective on vulnerable people like children, and we see this in the Patrick Star Show. Not only did Patrick start eating Goofy Goober ice cream when he was young, and eventually yeah. ended up working there and worshipping their god, but yeah. this green kid also grew up to become an employee at Goofy Goobers. Where? Prove it. There's a clear pattern here. 
that's not the same person, bro. The teeth are different. He got more teeth. I don't believe it. I don't There's believe it. That's a, a stretch. Pattern That's a stretch. Kids who eat the ice cream all eventually join the cult. They are stretch. specifically targeting children for indoctrination, but their manipulation goes far beyond just psychological tactics. Okay. Trust me, we've just scratched the surface of how far Goofy Goobers will go to brainwash its members. Things are about to get darker. It's Mr. Bobo. Are you okay? Are you about to eat the cat? Don't eat the ice cream. He was trying to convince himself to not eat the cat. I'm on to you, Alex. There's a part in the SpongeBob Please don't movie Shane where SpongeBob in the cat. and Patrick go to Goofy Goobers and eat tons of ice cream all night to the point where they become completely drunk off of it. It's just cracking the ice cream. It's a really funny scene, but it begs the question, why does the ice cream get them drunk? Just Maybe crack. that's just how ice cream works in the SpongeBob universe, and it's the show's way of making a family-friendly alcohol reference. But we've seen other instances where characters eat tons of ice cream and it doesn't have this effect on them. All right, well, Maybe this was just a one-time gag for the yeah, movie. Yeah, it was a gag. It's it was not a, gag. a consistent part of the continuity. But in the season 11 episode, Call the Cops, we get this scene. <laughs> one too many goofy goobers again, eh, Patrick? Oh, no. There's alcohol in the ice cream. So, another deliberate reference to Goofy Goober ice cream oh. having a weird alcoholic effect on people. Is it possible that they put something in the ice cream to make people more open to cult indoctrination? Cults have been known to use drugs to keep their followers yeah, obedient yeah. and suggestible. Trust me, I know. One of the most infamous examples <laughs> of this being yeah, Charles know. Manson, who used LSD to convince his followers of his beliefs. If this is the case with Goofy Goobers, they'd probably want to make sure everyone there eats as much ice cream as possible, and the Goofy Goober building is actually cleverly designed in a way to ensure that this happens. There are no windows in the entire building, so you can't tell whether it's day or night. And that's the Goofy crazy. Goober clock just has random numbers on it, so it's impossible to no, keep track insane. of time. That's insane. Because that's of this insane. SpongeBob No, that's that's actually when if you think of it like that, that's actually insane, bro. Ice cream all night and is actually late for work for the very first time. Also, can I point out the fact that the eyes on the clock seem to follow Patrick around in the Goofy Newbie? It's a really creepy and specific detail to include I mean, we know from the movie that the eyes are usually supposed to be looking straight ahead, but yeah. here they're always watching Patrick, their next target for Cause indoctrination. Because he's fucking sexy. Now, Have you seen Patrick? Their followers in line, Look at him. They definitely want to make sure their employees were eating as much as possible. And it turns out Goofy Goobers actually has a policy about this. <laughs> Eating. Wow. I can't believe Goofy Goober's employees get to eat all the ice cream they want on this job. Eating ice cream on break is so... Oh my god, that just sounds disgusting. Ice cream in general is disgusting, okay? If you like ice cream, you're a questionable character in my, in my eyes. Because who purposely wants to eat something cold? That's just mind-blowing to me. But hmm. on break the is employees ridiculous. employees get to eat all the ice cream they want. Very interesting. And there's evidence to suggest that the ice cream can do a lot more than just make you suggestible. At the beginning of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick is holding up the line asking for samples of ice cream. The employee he's talking to gets frustrated and calls for security to kick him out. Why? There's something oddly familiar about this employee. Hang on a second. Isn't that Patrick's sister? The new spin-off, The Patrick no! Star Show, is a prequel to no, the No, it's show not. Look at the head. Us to Patrick's little sister. This nigga Alex did not study geometry. What if everything he does is fucked up because he doesn't know the geometry? Oh my god. And here, we see her all grown up working at Goofy Goobers. She's even credited as Squidina and has the same voice You're saying actor. the hat. No, the hat. Look at her head. Her head right here is thicker than the hat. You're telling me when she grow her head not gonna get bigger. BS. 
the Patrick Star Show, we actually do see her eating Goofy Goober ice cream as a kid, which fits with the pattern of kids who eat the ice cream eventually getting indoctrinated into the cult. Now, yeah. Squidina and Patrick have a very close, loving relationship in the Patrick Star Show, but here, okay. they act like they're total strangers. It's not surprising that Patrick would forget his own sister, but Squidina is always portrayed as being smart. It's almost like she completely forgot about him. Well, it's One almost the like they're not the same person. To indoctrinate people is Maybe isolating they're just not the same person. The family to make them more vulnerable and dependent on the cult. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with Squidina. She has no memory of her family. The ice cream might just be affecting her memory as well. I mean, Stretch. if she was just meant to be some random reusable character here with no continuity, why would the creators go out of their way to specifically credit her as Squidina, unlike the other random employees who are just credited as employee? Feels like they're deliberately trying to draw oh. attention to it. Oh, I never mind, never mind. She has the same name, so I can't, I can't debate it. They're the same name. Of the goofy newbie, Patrick goes crazy and eats a ton of the ice cream, and then the episode ends in a very interesting way. <laughs> now, I don't think Patrick was actually abducted by aliens. I mean, we see him on Earth in the very next episode, and the UFO has the same fake look as the one in the training video. Yeah. I think that because of all the ice cream he ate, he now fully accepts the Goofy Goober's beliefs, and yeah. it's caused him to hallucinate, hallucinate. the UFO. That's what I was gonna so, say, yeah. at this point, I'd say we can make a very strong case for Goofy Goobers being a cult, but with this realization comes a very dark and tragic new meaning for the what makes what makes them a death cult though? spongebob movie believe me what makes you them will a never death look cult? at that movie the same way again because even if they are a cult that doesn't necessarily they're trying to mean they're trying to kill somebody why are you walking like that like you're not in your own house He's trying to eat us again. And we're the cat. He's trying to eat our pussy. His pussy. There's some coochie getting ate. I mean, pussy getting ate. What are you doing with that cat, sir? I don't trust these shirt, sir. I don't trust your activity, sir. You're not reliable, sir. The Spongebob movie. I think what he's doing is he puts clips of his actual like real life show that he wants to do or like real life like uh other videos throughout the video to like in a way to promote it. I think that's what that, that is. The 2004 Spongebob movie is my favorite thing to come out of the franchise. It's okay. funny, it's emotional, and it encapsulates everything great about Spongebob. In this movie, Spongebob goes on a journey of self-discovery and realizes that he doesn't need to change who he is and grow up to fit into society. He just yeah. has to embrace his inner kid and be himself. It's a great message that feels really fitting for the character. But now but we have a bunch of grown-ass adults kid, acting like killed children, so it's not that great of a message. We have a bunch of grown people acting like kids spongebob done manipulated the masses with goofy goober spongebob's arc takes on a whole new meaning it's not about spongebob embracing being himself it's okay. about spongebob fully accepting the indoctrination and beliefs of the goofy goober cult the movie starts with spongebob not getting promoted to manager of the new crusty crab a job yeah. that he desperately wanted and believed that he would get when he finds out that squidward got chosen instead of him it completely destroys him. Yeah, because that's will target why Squidward. Vulnerable people that's nasty. Who are at extremely that's nasty. low points. And the nasty. first place that Spongebob goes to after having his heart broken is Goofy, Goofy Goober. After a night of getting drunk off of ice cream, he becomes resentful of Mr. Krabs and oh, decides shit. to tell him off. I deserve that manager's job! But you didn't give it to me! Because you say I'm a kid! Well, I am 100% man! And this man This is actually nasty. The real life depiction of this, like the actual, the actual, this is crazy, bro. I didn't realize SpongeBob was like this for real. And it's got something to say to you. This, 
SpongeBob turned into in a fact, crackhead. If King Neptune didn't interrupt and try to kill Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob probably would have quit and been fully able to join the cult. SpongeBob and Patrick go on a quest to retrieve Neptune's crown, and it's almost Neptune like every obstacle the day. they face along the way is specifically designed to make SpongeBob and Patrick realize the dark truth about Goofy Goobers, but they fail to do so at every turn. So, they first stop at this tough guy bar that's full of men who beat up anyone that isn't manly enough. Yeah. They wouldn't touch me. They know better. They wouldn't touch me. <laughs> right, chat. But I think there's actually a lot more going on here than it seems. This place actually has an insane amount of similarities to the Goofy Goober ice cream parlor. They're both shaped like eh. boats. They both have bikes out front and a bar inside. And they both have two. Maybe, maybe because they both have people who have to get there some way. So they have bikes outside. They're shaped like boats because I don't know they're underwater. They have bars because, I mean, they're grown. I don't know about that. titles that start with the same letter, Goofy Goobers and Thug Tug. Is it possible that this place is actually a former Goofy Goobers no. establishment that no. was abandoned? I mean, they uh, literally not, have the Goofy Goober that. theme song on hand. SpongeBob, it's the Goofy Goober theme song. And they claim that no kids are allowed here, yet we see some old kid-sized handprints in the bathroom. How the fuck you know those are kid-sized handprints? It could just be a different breed of fish. If this really is a former Goofy Goobers, then these guys would probably know the truth about the cult, which would explain why they're so against having anyone who's not manly in the bar. It's not because they hate kids, it's because they're trying to keep out a dangerous cult. If SpongeBob okay. and Patrick just stuck around a little longer, maybe they would have learned this too, but they quickly sneak out and even make fun of the tough guys at the bar. Come on, Pat, one more time. Okay, we're on a baby hunt, I don't think we don't know how to weed. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't get the lesson they were supposed to from this place. Then I mean, I want to get a lesson either. Stop at a random ice cream stand, but it turns out it was actually a trap for a monster to lure unsuspecting victims. Okay, Patrick, let you can let go now. Hmm. That's a nasty An ice trap. cream store that's a facade for something darker that lures people in and keeps them trapped. It's like the ocean is literally screaming the truth to SpongeBob and Patrick. No, because if I got put in the same situation, I'm not going to start thinking ice cream, thug tug, goofy goobers. That's not what I'm doing, bro. Just aren't getting it. But then they reach an obstacle that's just too great for them to pass, and it makes them reevaluate some things about themselves. We're not kids. Open your eyes, Patrick! We worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake. You've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years. <laughs> oh right? my god, You're I'm getting right, tired of seeing this nigga pants. It isn't until Mindy helps them realize that they're more than just Goofy Goober kids that they can Armor continue on their journey. They sing an song. entire song about how they believe in themselves now, and Patrick even says this. Now, now that we're men. men. I changed my underwear. Where? They <laughs> have finally broken free from the cult indoctrination. Yep. But unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. Because they They're lose their mustache. They're stopped by a hitman plankton hired to take them out, and he completely destroys all the progress they've made to grow as characters. Step aside, and you won't have to feel the awesome wrath of our He has those steel boots, right? <laughs> Of course they were fake! They end up getting abducted by a scuba diver who, to them, is a terrifying alien from another world. Which is an interesting parallel to Reginald Goober being taken by aliens. So that nigga Goober was just eaten. He wasn't taken to another world. They saw him, they saw Goober and was like, ooh, this is, this is, a, this is a tasty looking fish. Okay, Goober just tastes good. They're taken to Shell City in a room full of dead fish. A place eerily similar to a death cult after a mass suicide. While SpongeBob and Patrick are being dried to death, they decide to fully embrace the Goofy Goober's beliefs and spend their last moments alive singing the Goofy that's Goober insane. theme song. Oh, that's, that's crazy Goofy manipulation Goober. right there. Yeah. yeah. You're a Goofy Goober. Yeah. We're a Goober. But then, just like death cults always promise, they and everyone in the room are reborn when the sprinkler system turns on. Yep. Yep, the cult is real. And that that's when he fully believed. That's when they fully believed because they this revived. Is, uh, it's getting real dark. 
Then we get to the climactic finale of the movie. Ray Rags? SpongeBob returns to the Krusty Krab, now a changed man. He has to battle Plankton and his army of mind-controlled slaves, and this is how the final confrontation plays out. Yeah. If I've learned anything during that time, it's that you are who you are. So yeah, I'm a kid, and I'm okay. also a goofball, and okay. a wingnut, and a knucklehead mixed bazatron. Yeah. Oh, what's going on here? But most of all, most of I'm all, you, you, I'm you, I'm, I'm a goofy goober. I'm a goofy goober. On first watch, this is such a satisfying and cathartic moment for Spongebob. But in reality, this is the moment that he has gone past the point of no return and becomes a Goofy Goober. I mean, I'm just saying, if I was singing a Goofy Goober song on my deathbed and then I revived, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't blame it. I don't blame him. Now, this is normally when I pretend like the video was over and then surprise you with a last minute twist, but... I don't need to pretend this time. If you think this entire video has been insane rambling and none of this could possibly be intentional, well then just for you, I have saved my best piece of evidence for last. Okay, Are man. you ready? While no. Spongebob sings the Goofy Goober song, we cut to him standing on the world and getting abducted by a UFO. <laughs> and even the UFO's lights make a pattern of red, yellow, red, which is eerily similar to the Goofy Goober UFO that has two red cherries oh with God. a yellow banana in the middle. Oh and that God. is the Goofy Goober alien death cult theory. Okay. I do believe it. I mean, I, can, I think it's passable. It's definitely passable. I'm not mad at it. It's not a bad theory. I mean, it all, it, it goes pretty well.